Hey guys, it's Ryan, and we're back again with another replay video of the Character Clash Tournament. Uh, today we're going to be going over the top 16. The last video was the wild card round, and Yugo, Jaden, Mokuba, and Shun went on to the top 16. If you have any questions on how the tournament functions or what the requirements were, I went over that in the last video, so you can check that up in the uh, the top right corner right now. So without further ado, let's start up at the uh, the top left here with uh, Tirano versus Yugo. All right, starting off game number one. Looks like uh, Tirano won the toss and elected to go first. Starting off with a reasoning, pulls out the scythe for no effect, but still it's a body on board. Over Raptor searching out Miscellaneous Saurus, which searches out the uh, the crocodile, destroying Baby Saurus and searching out Ultra Evolution. Over Raptor doing some uh, some juggling with the babies, eventually being able to get. Uh, Alti Tirano, Alti Conductor Tirano out with uh, with a Dolka. That's uh, that's a that's a yikes. Popping back row with the uh, Phoenix and uh, popping more back row with Access Code Talker. Uh, I believe. Now don't quote me on this, but I believe that's game. All right, game number two. Our Speedroid player decides to go first. But if you look at our opponent's uh, hand there, there's that Nibiru, which <laughs> that's critical against a speedroid player. Looks like he's actually able to go off. He had a decent hand. Um, but then once that Takantambor comes down, yeah, Nibiru just stops pretty much everything that tracks. Um, yeah, that uh, attack debuff isn't going to do anything. Be able to stall out a little bit with the appointer of the Lotus uh, by getting rid of the Lost World, but at this point, yeah, that's not gonna, that's really not gonna do anything. Pankertop's popping the Tuck and Tomborg, preventing him from going into something like Fast Dragon or uh, uh, Clear Wing Synchro. Baby attacking into the token. And a Lost World destroying from the deck. Obi Raptor will search out a Miscellaneousaurus. It can't quite do lethal, but main phase two is just going to do some more baby looping. Uh, Archosaur is going to search out the Ulti uh, Ultra Pill, Evolution Pill, which will drop uh, Ulti Conductor Tyranno. And that Link monster, I think. Uh, Pentastag will allow for uh, piercing damage. So it's pointing to Alti Conductor, which will uh, allow him to do piercing damage if he so chooses. But at this point, the life points are low enough that uh, Tyranno will just do the uh, the thousand attack or the thousand damage on the attack. All right, on to the next round or the the next match rather. Uh, we got uh, Serena versus Soulburner. So Serena starts off with some allures of darkness. Um, kind of looping this Martin here. Uh, Redoer's uh, discard is an effect. So Martin's effect does go off because it was sent to the graveyard by effect. I think Redoer might be the only Xe that uh, detaches for effects. That is a neat little uh, interaction with the Luna Light cards. Uh, he's able to end on the Abyss Dweller, and the Impermanence <laughs> comes down to prevent that. Redoer does grab a monster, so you know, hopefully for hoping for a trap so he can do some interruption. Um, the Impermanence does stop the debug, but he does have access to the Parallel Exceed, which lets him go into Access Code Talker, uh, and the Transcode lets him attack twice, so... Banish two links, pop the field, and attack for game. Game number two. Looks like the uh, Luna Light player decided to go second. Starting off with your standard uh, combos, he did open up with the Gazelle, so he's able to uh, summon that. Uh, when the, I believe it was the 
first bailings was sent to the to the graveyard. Uh, and down comes the Nibiru. That is a big token. Uh, 4,000 booty is uh, definitely difficult to get around. Martin's effect goes off to search out the fusion. Fusion for the one that cannot be destroyed by battle, I believe. And go into Unicorn to pop the token or spin the token. Unfortunately, he does have a skill drain, so can't get over that token. That's a, that's a big token. Uh, we are now into uh, Caveman Yu Gi Oh! Oh, but there's a Nibiru. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he is well within the Nibiru zone. Um, probably should. Should have chained it to the end of the main phase one rather than waiting till main phase two. Could have saved some life points um, and still gotten rid of everything because, uh, you know, there was nothing he could do to stop the attacks from going through anyway. So he could, should have done it at the end of uh, main phase one. Um, and now, honestly, it's just a waiting game because. He kind of screwed himself over, the uh, Salad player screwed himself over with the uh, Imperial Order because he really doesn't have a play at this point. He's just kind of biding his time and um, summoning Falcon to kind of chump block for him uh, with no effects, no you know, no monster effects, and no spells. Um, kind of in a weird game state. Really, his only uh, only chance of getting out of this would be probably the uh, oh, well, what is it? The salad uh, summon from grave to uh, to pop a face up. You could probably get around the imperial order, um, but then you're still looking down a uh, Nibiru and uh, uh, some some Lunalites pretty pretty quick. So. Uh, the Imperial Order does screw him over, and now he attacks for game. Alright, game number three! So the uh, Salaman Great Player lost and decided to let the Lunalites go first. So Martin summoning itself from the grave by bouncing Kaleido Chick. Getting Kaleido Chick back, and then just ending on a Dweller. Uh, normally this isn't a terrible opening, you know, Little Ace probably don't have a great going first play. They're really a just OTK, especially with uh, with Crimson Fox being able to just zero out the attack and then go for game. Um, cheese is able to kind of cheese out a, uh, a stall here with the, with the uh, Plan B. Bait out the uh, the Abyss Dwellers material, and then at this point, he's safe. Uh, he does have the the set rage, um, and then as soon as he has that Bailinx on board, he is safe from the Nibiru. Uh, I think the Bailinx was the fourth or fifth summon, uh, so he was always safe from from being Nibiru'd. And then that's game. All right, this is uh, this is my match against uh, Ion uh, playing Jaden's Masked Heroes. Uh, he starts off with some Vision Hero stuff, summoning and uh, setting to the play in the Spell and Trap zone. Uh, Violon is able to send the Shadow Mist to search out Stratos. I wasn't really sure where his bottleneck was, so I figured eh, Stratos is a good card. I think I'll ask that. Uh, at this point, my hand is looking really bad. Um, he doesn't end. I, thankfully, he doesn't end on a great board. Uh, drawing into the the Chandler was phenomenal, but I had to waste the Swallow's Nest on the Singing Lanius, uh, which means that my combo pieces, you know, that's 
pretty much the garnet of the deck. My com so my combo piece is dead, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I wanted to get the, because I opened up Soul Shave, I wanted to get the Raid Raptor uh, with Force Strikes into the grave so I could at least have some sort of protection. Um, but with the Singing Lanius in my opening hand and having to use that, I really was not able to do anything. Um, so he's able to bail out the, the Cyber Dragon Infinity and uh, attack for game. So game number two, um, I elected to let him go first again. Uh, my hand is better. It's, again, not great. I don't have any interruptions, so he's able to go into the uh, the fusion that uh, if I attack a hero, then he can just destroy a card on the field. So, even though he has a 2,000 attack monster in attack position, I cannot go for Utopia Double and end the game right here. Especially, even then, with the uh, with the Honesty Neos. Or Honest Neos in his hand, so I really can't even attack over it anyway for the, the full pop. So I just had to go with my standard combo plays of uh, getting Cyber Dragon Infinity on board and uh, and all that. Being able to uh, pop the or bounce the hunting ground back to my hand to summon Zephyros. And then do some nice damage. Some more summoning Apex Avian in the uh, end phase, and then uh, Harpist searching out Chandler. Baiting out my Apex Avian with the Lightning Storm, and then the Dark Calling with Cyber Dragon Infinity. And then at this point, uh, he just scoops it up. Game number three, and he chose to go first this time. Uh, I, I ended up telling him after the, after the fact that I really don't have a good going first play necessarily. Um, so my hand is uh, is definitely very good going second. By unable to send the uh, the malicious to have some some link material, summons out the, the malicious. Goes for the fusion summon. Searches out Honest Neos, and uh, I think at some point here, yeah, there it is. He searches out the uh, the Plasma, and decides to go for the Plasma instead of leaving this board. Not that it really would have mattered. Um, either way, it's susceptible to uh, to evenly matched. He does have the Mass Change set, so he's able to at least save that and end on a Dark Law. That does cause a little bit of issue. Um, I'm able to get around it pretty easily. Um, however, I was distracted about midway through this combo uh, and forgot that I had played evenly mashed and was in the main phase two. So I'm like, oh, hey, I can just attack over it. Oh, wait, we're never mind. So I end on the Utopia double and just kind of sit on it. Um, I could have summoned Harpy Queen here and do a little bit more damage. Um, but I opted to just kind of hope that he wouldn't be able to, to kill me here. So he uses Honest Neos to boost the attack. And he tries to attack over my Utopia double. But that is a quick effect. So I'm able to search out the double or nothing and summon Utopia um, at 5,000 attack. And from here, uh, he doesn't have anything to stop me from just entering the battle phase and attacking over his 900 monster for game. So my, my misplay nearly cost me the duel, but uh, I was able to get through it. All right, the next match is uh, I versus Anna Kaboom. Uh, Anna Kaboom being played by Yui and Master of Lancer playing I's deck. So Wicked uh, searching out the tuner and then uh, Floating into recovering the ones out of Monster Reborn. Um, that Adagnister is able to summon to the the zone that the uh, the Dark Lord is pointing to, which lets him summon two back from the grave, um, and he ends on a IP and a Quantum.
Reborn triggering both their effects to summon and search. Does are coming down to summon. Tunnler summoning and River Stormer searching out the uh, that other infinite track. Uh, Mr. Tor was. Summon, copy the level, and go into some Gustav Max for that nice burn, and then uh, end the game with this. I think he was going to try to go into Abermax, but, uh, but the Chalice comes in clutch. Lencer makes him go first, but the, uh, the train player does have that Nibiru and the, uh, and the quick play spell set. Saw the field spell, so he's going into some of his standard combo pieces of uh, you know, summoning, searching, and uh, summoning some more. However, he chains Nibiru to the urgent schedule, and <sighs> that really hurts. Alright, next match is Mokuba versus Zane. Moku Mokuba goes first, played by. Ibuera. That's a decent opening. Able to get out Titan. Impermanence comes down to, to negate the Titan. Um, that should make it easier to at least get over so it doesn't isn't able to save it. Machine dupe on the core though. Must be nice. Too bad Called by the Grave only affects the original name, so he can't just zero out anything with the name Cyber Dragon. There's that second Called. Nova to summon back the Cyber Dragon and then go into Cyber Dragon Infinity to suck up that Thunder Dragon. Using the second Nova and then to go into River Stormer to search out, does it look like Dozer? And then pass turn because he still can attack over the Titan. Attack over one Cyber Dragon Infinity and then uh, try to pop the other, uh, the Nova. But Al Mirage is able to chain block and cause Titan to miss timing. However, there is enough hand advantage of discarding effects to, uh, to keep using Titan's effect. I don't think he wanted to pop the uh, the Nova because that can float into something much larger. The Ghost Ogre to pop that. So floating into Panzer Dragon into um, the Link to double his attack and attack over the Titan. Oh look, it's it's Jurassic. Uh, summoning VFD, that's totally unexpected. I never would have thought that would have happened. Uh, <laughs> for those of you unfamiliar, I'm pretty sure every single deck I've seen Jurassic play has been either VFD Turbo or just has the way of making it. <laughs> um, but at this point, I think I think that uh, stalled him out just enough to be able to uh, to end the game. All right, game number two. Thunder Dragon player has opted to go first. Unfortunately, not opening up particularly well. Able to uh, make both of them the uh, sum of each of their levels. So the four plus the five equals nine. And there's Calamities again. That 3,000 is just a little too hard to get over. But, uh... Duo sends back the, uh... The uh, Thunder Dragon, and uh, now we're going to Fusion Summon into a Titan. 
active. It doesn't have any uh, any material, and the VFD is preventing him from from attacking or activating any effects. And then, so this uh, fifth summon is a lambda, so he's able to activate the gamma from hand, negating the Nagiro. All right, going on to the next match is Simon Says versus Kieran. Simon's playing Pendulum Magicians, and Kieran is playing Black Wings. Starting off with the Magician Souls to send the Ed Endymion to the grave. Uh, Coronagraph to summon Time Gazer. Alliance searches out Pendulum Call to complete the scales and then make a big Pendulum Summon. Harmonizing summons out a level 4 to go into Boral Old Savage Dragon. Um, and the uh, Serena, Selena, summons back Endymion. So we have a Savage Negate, we have a Naruto Negate, and then an Endymion Negate. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, card does need to go back to the hand, um, but between Naruto and Savage, there is enough to uh, to stop the uh, Kieran's plays here. It's got a Solemn Judgment and a Call by the Grave set. Solemn's the Allure of Darkness, and that's game right there because he's below uh, lethal life points. Black Fane somebody back Chronograph by low having the attack of the Wise Tricks, and that's game. Game number two. Kieran lets Simon go first. Magician Soul sending the Endymion, and Chronograph uh, popping itself to summon Time Gazer. Wow, this combo looks familiar. Completing his scales and pendulum summoning all three from the extra deck. Uh, not all three. Just two of them. But he's able to go into Narito and have a nice uh, little bit of a protection. However, there is that uh, Dark Ruler No More that honestly isn't needed at this point. Trader Joe bringing back Not Hung. And some more bringing out the Apex Avian. Game number three. Simon goes first yet again. Blue Boy searching out the Spellbook of Secrets, which searches out the Spellbook of Knowledge. That's a lot of draw. Pendulum Call to help complete the scales. And that Alliance to search out Trap Graph. Trap Graph. Trap Graph is definitely great against uh, Black Wings from the mere fact that uh, Black Whirlwind really can't resolve if you have Trap Graph out. Pendulum Call protecting his scales from being destroyed, so he's got pretty much free pops all around. Pendulum summon a bunch of monsters and go into Appaloosa to help uh, beat over the Apex Avian. Oh look, it's a moon. But you don't have a Black Queen to banish. That uh, that Soul Shave in hand though is, uh, is brutal, for sure. Dark Ruler no more, but... That's not going to be enough. And there's game. Altergeist versus Raid Raptors. Altergeist goes first and starts off with a pot of extravagance to draw two. Duality for that little bit of extra uh, consistency. Marionette is negated, but 
the anti-spell fragrance, I think, uh, really does seal that deal. Between that and the and the ash, the raid raptor is not doing anything. Oh yeah, there's also a solemn judgment. Uh, I just I'm getting frustrated just watching this. <laughs> uh, down comes the multi faker to summon uh, Siloquus, bouncing the set spells because anti-spell fragrance, and then honestly from here it's uh it's kind of sad feel bad for the raid raptor player constant bouncing of set stuff spoofing summoning out multi fakers protocols preventing all effects from from all take guys effects from being negated it's kind of a massacre i'm i'm sorry Raid Raptor player. Shh, didn't need to add like this. Finally, J Voids is able to summon enough monsters to go into, uh, I think, both links and, uh, and finally attack for game, but uh, it does take quite a while here. The Conquiry negating the attack, Siliquist bouncing the back row, and then finally we're able to uh, summon enough monsters to attack for game. Barely. Alright, game number two. Reed Raptor's going first, but it looks like they drew pretty much their entire side deck. That's rough. Force trick search set. I don't know, setting the evenly matched feels weird. Unfortunately, he does have that face up force trick, so uh, Lightning Storm is currently not able to be activated. Now, Multi Faker comes down, summoning the Siliquis, which has that bounce ability. Protocol negating that effect, and Lightning Storm is still dead. Conquery comes down, negating the the uh, attack and the effect. At the end of the battle phase, activating evenly matched, which does a little bit of damage. Now he's able to activate the Lightning Storm. But spoofing is able to uh, spin away some stuff before it gets destroyed. And with the marionette being able to get back to protocol, and protocol activating to summon the multi faker on the next turn, I think this one's getting away from him too. I think Redo is able to to snag a trap as well, so uh, he does have that disruption. Is this going to be enough for game? Yes, indeed. The next match is Yuya versus Revolver. Geo Geo playing Odd Eyes and uh, I believe Frozen Lava Reflector playing Rockets. Starting off by going into shooting Riser Dragon to send the Dark Worm. Pendulum Summon and Pass. That uh, Clutch Twin Twister to clear the scales, though. Excel Synchro into the, uh, is that the Tenny? Synchro. Yeah, Berserker. Here comes Dr. Red, summoning back stuff to go into the Heretic Seal, or the Heretic Sphere. Bouncing the Berserker, and then banishing the Dark Worm with the Call.
So that has the quick effect that you can banish your opponent's monster effect when it activates uh, an effect. Clap Serpent going into Weapon Burster. And then now he is free to move about the cabin. The decks were due before uh, Red Eyes Dark Smell Dragon got its errata printing in the TCG, so this is a pre errata Red Eyes Dark Metal Dragon. What you gonna top deck, Geo? I mean, Skyros is definitely not the worst card to top deck, for sure. Fortunately, he runs into Savage Dragon, and uh, I think you're just about out of resources here. Oh, got the Upstart Goblin, but uh, yeah, still has that counter, so game over. On to game number two. Geo attempts to search for Nodeyes, but runs into an Ash. Using a uh, Dragon Shrine to send Dark Worm, searching out Gate Zero. Popping the Gate Zero with Sky Iris to search out a Dissolver. Completing the scales with Arc Pendulum and Dissolver, using Gate Zero's effect to pop Dissolver, summoning a Furious Dragon. Arc's effect triggers summoning another Dissolver from the deck. Then he uses Dissolver's effect to summon Vortex and then goes into Spheres for that spin. Spheres tributes itself to, uh, to bounce the summoned rocket. And Arc summons another Persona from deck. Revolver is able to summon a couple dragons and go into Heavenly Spheres. Geo uh, kind of forces the Spheres effect and then negates it with uh, Vortex. Spheres summons out a rocket from... Is that a rocket? I don't know. Essentially. A honorary rocket? Gatling Ghoul for that nice damage. And then uh, that is enough for game. One and one, going on to game number three. Rockets go first, searching out that uh, boot sector launch. Collapse Surfing into Wyvern Burster. Boot sector summon. A bunch of monsters. Summon from the deck and uh, search out Dr. Red with the uh, that uh, Red Eyes the Black Metal Dragon. Pisty summons Red Eyes Dark Metal Dragon from the graveyard, which grabs Magna Rocket. Like I said, the uh, Dr. Red was before the Errata, so he was able to use that twice, not being a hard once per turn. Boral Savage in defense mode to avoid any lightning storms that might happen. And then the Abomination to uh, have essentially three pops on his turn. Uh, if something is destroyed by battle, uh, I believe if something is destroyed, and if something at the end of the at the end of the turn, he's also able to get another destruction. Gamma is activated to negate the Heavenly Spheres, which allows him to summon Gamma from hand and a Driver from deck. Abomination's effect is able to activate so that he can destroy Ark before the effect is able to resolve. Searching out the uh, Levianir by targeting Boral Savage, which is neat. Dissolver summoning a Vortex to bounce the Abomination. And uh, negate from, from Vortex. Uh, due to a misclick, uh, Frozen decides to go straight to the main phase two, which that's that's rough, buddy. Levinier gets negated by the Vortex, but he does have a little bit of follow-up plays. 
boot sector launch, allowing him to summon enough material to go into another abomination. Link triggering his own effect to pop himself, which triggers Abomination's effect to uh, be able to pop the Sky Iris. He also gets that end phase destruction to get rid of the Vortex. He's able to summon Dark Worm using his effect to search out Gate Zero, giving him enough materials in hand to use Dissolver's effect to summon Vortex, which bounces the Abomination. Attack for some nice damage, then summon Heavenly Spheres. Frozen attempts to activate the effect of Boot Sector to summon from the grave, but Geo chains the Heavenly Spheres, bouncing the Dissolver to cause the Boot Sector to resolve without effect. The normal summons a monster and attacks, but runs into Dissolver's other ability to prevent destruction by battle. Unfortunately, the Scythe comes down and kind of seals the deal, uh, prevents Geo from going into the extra deck for the turn. And uh, I think that's all he really needed to... Levineer destroys two cards on the field. Boot Sector summons, and uh, Boral Savage Dragon runs into a Gamma. Even though he was able to destroy the Boral Savage, I don't think he's going to have enough resources to come back from that. The Upstart goes into the Infinite Impermanence, and that doesn't help. At least he still has some life points. Let's see what he draws. Ooh, an allure. Activate the allure and scoop. Oh, womp womp. Well, that was the top 16. Uh, I certainly had a lot of fun watching that. There were some some great plays, some some big brain plays, some big numbers. You know, the the whole nine yards. Um, but uh, I'll be working on the top eight coming up here pretty soon. So stay tuned for that. And remember, guys, if you don't draw the meta, who will? Peace. Huh, clicking the subscribe button's a good move. I guess there's a first time for everything. Feel free to click on these third-rate videos from a fourth-rate Yugi tuber. But I don't have time for such amateurs. Come on, Mokuba, let's go get ice cream.